Thank you. Now to get things started, Roy Wesley is a friend of Loyola, a friend of Giselle. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, he currently has a PhD in cellular and in molecular research biology, I believe, and currently works at PharmaLogic. Uh, he's taken a big chunk of his day to come here to speak to us. So if we all please join in and welcoming Roy, please. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Eric. Um, thank you, Giselle, for setting all of this up for me uh, through a conversation that we had. We're neighbors. So um, uh, thank you, Emily, and uh, thank you, Professor Dane, for being here. Um, appreciate your being able to be in the, uh, the conversation. Uh, yeah, the Christchurch tragedy reminds us how much discrimination, prejudice, people's thoughts are that affect our lives. And so what I'll be relating, of course, is something that happened uh, after World War, during World War II that got the United States into the war uh, at the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And uh, what I wanted to discuss was some of the things in the 100 years that led up to it, uh, the racial prejudice and the discrimination that created the problems that the Japanese Americans faced. You know, it's always been a problem, and many of you can identify with it, to be somebody who is, looks different than the normal culture, the majority culture in which you're residing. And people form these opinions uh, of who you are based on the way that you look. How you behave in time will affect their judgment of who you are. But it takes quite a bit of time to be able to do that. And that was the case for the Japanese Americans at that time. Uh, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about my grandparents who were immigrants into this country. And as we all know, everybody in America is an immigrant except for the American Indians. Um, but on the left, you have my grandparents on the Wasugi side, who were my father's parents, and on the right, my mother's side, the Sasakis. Um, and they came into America at a time uh, ab about 120 years ago already, um, when America had been transitioning into uh, a society that wanted to have immigrant labor uh, for their own economic reasons. Uh, but they didn't want people to be too successful, of course, because then they would start displacing the wealth and of the uh, country at, at the time. And I think the circumstances are very similar to what we have today. So my grandfather, Wasugi, on my father's side, was born in 1880 in Gobo City, Wakayama, Japan, which is on the southeast side of the country. Um, it's a small, was a small village at that time. Um, and he entered the United States um, in 1899. My grandfather on my mom's side, Sagetsugu Sasaki, was born in 1875 in Nagoya, and he was from a line of Buddhist temple priests. Uh, he entered the United States in 1907. The Meiji Restoration increased a lot of the westernization that was occurring in Japan at that time. Uh, the Sino-Japanese Wars were significant, and it drained the country of a lot of resources. Uh, and promoted the, the thought that Japan needed to be building an empire because the island was restricted and they needed more room to expand out, uh, very much like the German thinking. And of course, they became allies. Um, the taxes at the time and a very poor economy forced a lot of the farmers, which is what my grandfather Wasugi was, uh, to seek other alternatives for uh, employment and for being able to survive. Um, and at that time, you also had all these posters posted all over Japan, touting the glories and the golden streets of, of the United States and in South America. So there was a large emigration period during that time. And the village in which my grandfather lived, there was actually an area called Little America because so many of the sons migrated out, emigrated out. And in the United States at that time, uh, the Naturalization Act in 1870 allowed um, 
Africans to be naturalized at that time, but not Asians. Um, 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act uh, allowed the Japanese laborers to replace the Chinese. And in 1901, just as a fact of what was going on also at the time, President McKinley was shot in Buffalo, New York at the Pan American Exposition, and Vice President Theodore Roosevelt became president. Um, we always forget about McKinley, it seems to me, being shot at that time, but it was a pretty major event. And in 1903, the Wright brothers uh, flew at Kitty Hawk, and the first cross-country automobile trip from San Francisco to New York took two months at that time. A very different situation. So the racial sentiments and the anti-Japanese -Jap uh, immigration laws were what was happening when my grandparents emigrated to the United States. So I just wanted to point out a couple of these uh, in uh, the Wong uh, Kim Act at that time was an important precedent because children of Chinese nationals were born in the United States and were considered U.S. citizens and that's consistent with the 14th Amendment and that's a very important case because it's a landmark case and it's there even our current administration thinks about trying to overturn that uh, to not allow uh, immigrant children to be uh, citizens. Um, in uh, 1905, there was a California resolution saying that Japanese laborers, by reason of race, habits, mode of living, and undesirable, and um, were barred from naturalization and cannot become citizens. Uh, well, of course, the reason for that was. Um, uh, that the same, the same thought was that in San, Fran the San Francisco Board of Education ordered that the Japanese, Chinese, and Korean children be taught in racially segregated schools. So there was this anti-Asian sentiment very strong uh, in California, and it was a long period of development over about 100 years. Um, so there, the origins of these injustices leading to our loss of freedoms at that time were things like in 1913, the California Asian land law forbidding the sale of land to aliens ineligible for naturalization. Um, and again, in 1922, uh, uh, the Ozawa versus US um, ruling saying that Japanese immigrants cannot naturalize because they are neither white or black, the only racial groups legally eligible for citizenship at that time. Um, and again, of course, we had uh, Japan's bombing of Pearl Harbor in 41, and of course, FDR's um, Executive Order, Order 9066, allowing for the federal uh, removal of 120,000 Japanese Americans. So at that time, what my grandfather Wasugi left in Japan was this beautiful village um, in Gobo, and that's the Hidaka River, which flows from the ocean, flows into the ocean at that point. Um, and uh, that picture in black and white is actually one from, taken about the time that he left, which was in 1910. <clears throat> and the bottom photo is one that I took in 2007 of that same area, looking from the family cemetery in Gobo uh, and you see rice fields where the green is and the Hadaka River and mountains. Um, and this is an aerial view showing the rice paddies where the, the Wasugi family farmed and the village, which was much smaller at that time. So the family uh, name, Wasugi, um, there's uh, Japanese characters there which show that the origin of the name means over the cedars because the family house was up on the top of the cliff overlooking all these beautiful Japanese cedars which is pictured there and uh, on the top. And the family home is the one that you're seeing there. It's of course, it's the modern one that exists on the property uh, where my grandfather was born. My grandfather emigrated in 1900 to the United States and arrived through British Columbia 